Oh yeah, now we're talking. I'm going straight in. You're crazy, man. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Welcome back to the channel, friends. We're just three regular guys hanging out on a Monday night, smashing back a curry, and now a nice sessionable amber ale. This is Andrew, by the way. Andrew's the new addition to the team. Hello. You'll uh, you'll be seeing a bit of him on, on videos coming up. We're just going to show you how we brew this very pleasing Doombar Coin. We've done plenty of brews of hazy pails and big dry hops, high ABV stouts and beers with adjuncts lately, so it's about time we did a video on a good old sessionable cask style ale. A few weeks ago I had an incredible pint of Doombar that was fresh and well cellared with the creamy froth on top that we Brits love. Okay, just a quick run down the system I'm using. Single vessel brew system there with the uh, grain basket fitting in the top a la claw hammer. Temperature control, got the ink bird here. Thermo well, mash paddle, whirlpool attachment. That's important, I want a really good um, efficient whirlpool. And the hose is nice big hot basket for that purpose. I'm just gonna batch sparge um, using ye olde urn. I've uh, got the plate chiller, the Blickman Therminator and I've got a Chinese import pump there. I might lose my temper with that at some point and probably just fit the Riptide. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how we go with that. Yeah, tilt hydrometer, we're all about those at the moment. Really good bit of kit, uh, except the fact that you spend hours a day going over the uh, analysis of the detail. And yeah, the uh, uh, Brutech brew bucket and a barrel. And at last, we're mashing. So we're going for an hour mash and uh, 64 degrees. A bit on the low end, that's to uh, produce more fermentable sugars, which will result in a drier beer. We're looking for 10.09 final gravity. I always forget to activate my damn backpack. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Anyway, there we go. I'm gonna put this in some warm water. That gets them swollen up in, a night, in an hour or so. Jobs are good. But let's see how she's doing under the hood. Oh yeah. Work looking good. The amber color already. Maybe you can make that out. A lack and delay. <laughs> Sparging now, as you can see. Uh, the good news is I found my metal mash paddle. Pretty psyched about that. I did no like of the plastic one. Ed's got our uh, sparge water kettle at his place, which is annoying, so I've gone old school with the urn, as you know. Don't bother commenting about astringency, unless you want to. The boil has been launched. What we've gone with is uh, 12 grams of Northern Brewer, and that's at 90 minutes, it's a 90 minute boil. That's gonna give us sort of a forest floor, woody, piney notes in the beer. And uh, Northern Brewer is a descendant of East Kent Goldings, which is very interesting. As you may have seen in previous videos, this is an experimental brew system, hence why we've slightly uh, um, cowboyed the uh, hot basket, but the hot basket is in the middle so we can get a great whirlpool around that going uh, a bit later on. As you can see after about an hour, hour and a half, the uh, sitting in a little warm water bath, the uh, Y East 1469 West Yorkshire Ale is nicely puffed up. That's going to attack our work like a hungry, hungry hippo. Doombar is allegedly brewed with the uh, Whitbread B dry strain. Now the reason we've gone with West Yorkshire 1469 as opposed to Y East Whitbread um, is that we personally really like this for malt forward beers. It finishes nice and dry and it also yields some really nice nutty notes which is uh, one of Doombar's characteristics. Probably a good kebab on a brew day. The Whirlpool attachment here is doing the business. As you can see that work is going around the basket nicely. We've got 70 grams of North Down, 70 grams of Perla in there. The North Down's gonna give us 
a uh, nice spicy floral berry fruit aroma. And the uh, perla is gonna give us sort of herby and fruity notes as well. I've bunged in a protoflock and I'm putting some yeast nutrient into. Okay, so we're now linked up to our plate chiller. Getting temperature dropping as you can see. What can you hear? You can't really hear much. All I can really hear is the fridge. That pump is really quiet. What were you just saying that, Matthew? What, I didn't hear it down. <laughs> exactly. So Matt from Riggle Valley Brewery is assisting me with the camera. He turned up just at the right time. Look in the description for where you can buy this baby from. Now this is something that me and Ed can't get enough of at the moment, is this tilt hydrometer. So we're gonna chuck that in and we can, every 15 minutes it updates, gives us our gravity and our temperature. In you go. We're going to ferment now for the first five days at 25 degrees C. That's obviously on the hot side. Uh, the reason being that we want to extract that fruitiness that Doombar is known for, that, that dried fruit quality. And then for the next eight or nine days, we'll go uh, down to 20 degrees C. Hey everyone, it's been just under two weeks, uh, including the last couple of days cold crashing. The beer is down to its final gravity of 10.09, pretty uneventful fermentation. And we're ready now to transfer to the pressure barrel. As I said earlier, I've never used one of these, so the first thing I'm going to do is lubricate the two white rubber gaskets on it. These barrels are infamous for allowing CO2 to seep out both at the uh, top and, and, and through the tap as well. You see loads of stories on this, so I'm going to be using Vaseline to lubricate those, which is, seems to be the tried and tested method. Ed's always got Vaseline lying around and uh, I've never really worked out why. <laughs> and once we've done that, we're going to thoroughly sanitize the pressure barrel and also the siphon ready for action. Just gonna add our dextrose to our nicely sanitized jug. Mix with a little hot water. Now we're going for quite a low level of carbonation being a cask ale, or cask style ale. Uh, I've only gone with uh, two grams, two grams of dextrose per litre, so 40. I actually, it was actually 45 grams. Let's see how that pans out. This is a surprise. I'm adding some finings. So, sanitise the pouch. Some mangrove jacks. In it goes. That's that. Okay, time to siphon. The reason that we want the tube right at the bottom and fill from the bottom up is so we don't expose the beer to too much oxygen. And there we have it, folks. One successfully pressure barreled beer. This is gonna sit in the fermentation fridge now for four weeks, and it's going to be at 14 degrees C. Then for the last couple of days, we're going to drop that to 12 degrees C. So that's the temperature we wanna serve at. Nice British ale temperature. Uh, camera recommend between 11 and 13. Cask mark between 10 and 14. So 12 is bang in the middle. So there we go. You condition and you condition good. And we'll see you guys in four weeks, which the magic of YouTube will be coming up in a couple of seconds. Oh yeah, boy. Curry and beers, the great British Monday night, they call it. Let's do this. Cheers guys. Cheers. 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 Are we doing a rainbow first time? Yeah, go for it. Ooh. It smells like it. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That yeah. rich fruit, a little bit of nuttiness, do you think? Yeah, do you like it? Yorkshire? That works for you. Does it not work for you? No, it does. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. No, he has got that fruitiness. Wow, that's really good. That's decent. That's good. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty close. That's a million times better than I thought it was going to be. Do you think? Yeah. It's a very hard water profile, mm. but then that, that is what they use. Ah! It's lovely, really good mm. body, really, really drinkable.
as well. Nice amount of gentle carbonation. Mm. So the... Um, what do you ferment out, shoot? Uh, 25 for the first okay. four days. 25 for the first four days and dropped it down to 20 for the remainder. Mm. Um, and that's what's giving that fruitiness. I don't, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it's nice. Don't really sink quite a few of these. You think? Mm. Well, we're, hopefully we're going to do two or three on them. We're going to see how much you can drink. <laughs> yeah. This is where the job interview starts. <laughs> Yeah, you're pretty spot on. So yeah, yeah. If someone said this to you at the pub and said it was Dubai, would you would you drink I would it drink and, it and not think anything? really question it, yeah. yeah. There you go, I'll take that. Which is a win. How about you? Yeah, same. Um, yeah, but the, it was it was all about the whirlpool. That was the that was that was the key. The yeah. Whirlpooling those hops for, for for half an hour. You know, it's not it's not a bit of beer. It's you know it's about what thirty IBU. Mm. So a few more. Mm. The colour's good. Like it's there, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So the colour's pretty spot on. It's just that slight cloudiness, that, but as you said. Okay. It's annoying because I've got findings in it. I've got I findings think, in it. I think it's done well. He was right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Dubai is clearer, but. From a bottle, it is. From a cask, mm, it probably is as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Look at that, the head sticking around on this one as well. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Happy with that. I'm like Mary. <laughs> <laughs> <Hello. laughs>